Hi, Prabhat. Welcome to NDTV Profit. Thank you so much uh, for taking our time for us. Just wanted to first get a sense that last when we spoke to you before demonetization, India was one of the preferred market that you said for FIIs within Asia. Uh, has that changed? I think India still continues to be an overweight. Um, I mean, most people are looking at this as uh, something will impact the economy maybe maybe a couple of quarters and things will uh, sort of head back to normal. Um, so I don't think uh, there is any change in preference. India was uh, one of the uh, preferred emerging market, I think continues to be uh, preferred still. Because of demonetization, do you think that FI18 numbers may really not see much change and that's why market is looking cheaper than what it was about three, four months back? Yeah, so I think uh, the uh, the fact is that markets uh, have become cheaper compared to what where they were at the, at the peak in the recent past. Um, more interestingly, actually, uh, not only have the markets corrected, uh, but uh, the yields, which is the uh, alternative sort of investment option in Indian markets have corrected quite sharply, um, partly because of demonetization exercise uh, and partly because obviously inflation has been coming down, etc. So uh, the fact is that uh, it is first time in you know five six years that we are seeing earnings yields versus the uh, bond yields uh, sort of starting to collide. Uh, you know earnings yields have always traded at a premium, uh, except once in a five thirteen for it briefly and and then two thousand seven uh, at a premium to bond yields. So markets have become cheaper. Uh, you know more expensive stocks uh, in consumer etc have corrected more. Uh, so clearly, in terms of just valuations, we are sitting in a much more healthy space. And if earnings don't correct that much, obviously, uh, you know, sort of sets the stage for uh, for a decent uh, performance uh, into going into a FI uh, 18. What do you think can be the impact on earnings from a near term perspective, say in the next six months or maybe nine months? What is the sort of impact that you see on earnings because of demonetization? So two things there. One, that there will be an earnings uh, impact is sure. Uh, but uh, the sectors which are impacted don't really have that much of weightage in our headline indices. So if you're looking at, uh, for example, Sensex and Nifty, then, you know, uh, weightage of sectors such as oil and gas, technology, metals, banks, um, is much larger percentage than of the sectors which are actually going to see uh, you know, a significant change in earnings because of the uh, slowdown that happens because of demonetization. Uh, cement has got a 2% weight. Autos have got a 9 to 10% weight out of which Tata Motors has a very large weight. So domestic autos weight is very small. Uh, and then you start uh, looking at sectors which are seeing demand slowdown, you actually will be hard pressed to find them. So, so the fact of the matter is that uh, the, uh, the while there will be a uh, you know, sort of more of an impact will be on, on discretionary demand, uh, more, uh, more, which could actually linger on. But the representation of discretionary demand in the headline index is very, very little. Therefore, our view is that earnings, you know, worst case might correct uh, three, four percent from whatever the growth rate uh, is forecast. So, if you're forecasting 15, 16 percent, we think a three, four percent cut to that growth is something that is the worst case scenario. You know, from markets uh, or from Nifty or Sensex point of view, what you're saying is that the downside may be limited. But, you know, whenever we see the recovery, the changes in the earnings, the changes in the pattern with which a lot of sectors uh, operate may change quite meaningfully after such uh, big exercises that we've seen in India. That is for sure. I mean, the fact that, for example, sectors which have, um, which, which, which have fair amount of cash dealings, for example, at the front end will definitely be impacted. Uh, but you know, the, the impact obviously depends on uh, the impact of discretionary, uh, well, how much how much discretion is there in, in the buying patterns. I mean, you don't expect, for example, a soap company, even though soaps are bought in cash, to get impacted because of this. But as you start moving towards a much uh, larger uh, sort of ticket items which are bought in cash, the impact starts to increase. Uh, and also depends on which geography you're sitting, rural or urban, so urban impacts are lower as we know compared to rural. Uh, some of this impacts obviously will be again transitory. Uh, I personally think that high end luxury, et cetera, et cetera, might have more lasting impacts uh, and, and the rest of stuff will probably come back uh, more quickly. Um, the sectors which are impacted on a more permanent basis could be informal sector, for example, because they need to change the way of working, they need to stop uh, start paying taxes. Uh, they might not have a direct impact, really speaking, on uh, on the uh, on the uh, sensex or index but they could actually have some sort of indirect impact if they become 
you know there's too much stress it come through a banking sector you know sort of impact or it could through come through an impact uh, in in nbfc uh, sort of uh, credit trading through msmes so so i think what we have to sort of be uh, mindful uh, when we say that the impact on earnings is limited uh, we have to be mindful of indirect impacts that come through and that is something that we we'll have to sort of wait and see as to how this whole thing evolves over the next uh, two to three quarter uh, period uh, our our base case uh, you know economy view is that it is a it is it's the impact is more transitory therefore economy will bounce back to normal course of sort of growth uh, in uh, in the calendar q2 next next calendar q2 so so you still have some impact in jan to march quarter but post that things will start to normalize actually what you're saying does also say that if a if there is a good brand a good business which is done in a organized manner that would actually benefit out of this exercise once we have uh, the currency problem being solved well again yeah it's possible i mean i think the nature of um, uh, first of all there are no indian high end luxury brands like i think the brands are more sort of always mass market in india so uh, so you right those brands could benefit at the expense of the informal sector for sure yeah absolutely banks and nbfcs have seen a correction do you think that this correction is a buying opportunity or you know businesses of some of these nbfcs and banks may really take a big hit so first of all banks uh, per se didn't the big banks did not correct it's the nbfcs which have corrected right because uh, you know some of the psu banks are up actually post demonetization um now nbfcs uh, largely uh, are uh, financing uh, either smes or they financing uh, consumption uh, uh, you know discretionary consumption they could be financing two wheelers they could be financing uh, you know um, uh, consumer durables they could be financing trucks and the problem is that the segments which are impacted uh, the first uh, because of any demonetization exercise is essentially uh, these segments and uh, secondly there are nbfcs which operate in rural areas uh, which have cash collections so uh, compared to banks the impact on nbfcs will be larger and uh, and that's the reason why you've seen nbfcs correct lot more than banks and i would think that it'll probably be a slightly longer term impact in the sense that might run run for two quarters maybe slightly longer uh, and while banks will be actually sitting uh, much more pretty i think because they are they might have some marginal stress in asset quality but they're benefiting a lot from cost of funding treasury gains etc so so preferred place in the short term actually will still be uh, will be banks rather than bfc in the short term do you think uh, banks which are getting excess liquidity now the loan demand has also contracted quite a bit and that's why even though the cost of funding is coming down their names would contract because the loan opportunity may not be that high well that is right uh, and that might continue for about you know one quarter or so because end of the day uh, when the economy slows down uh, like it has slowed down now and if the demand is less the inventory financing also will go down but i think that demand will probably start to reaccelerate back because when you happen something like demonetization happens then you will have uh, the entire the the ability of the system to hold inventory goes down therefore the uh, and i'm sure there are a lot of repayment which are happening happening uh, you know uh, in terms of people paying back their their loans in old currency all that might sort of start to uh, will will bottom out hopefully in the first quarter and things will start to look up in terms of loan growth so i'm i'm not that bearish on the loan growth uh, being completely dry i think uh, there are obviously reasons uh, which are leading to this kind of slow, slow down in loan growth all of a sudden uh some to do with demonetization some and 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 i think those sort of will sort of will will essentially move off over a couple of quarters digital banks digital wallets what does any bank do on the digital side do you think that will play an important differentiating role versus uh, the sector or what some of the other players are doing which in turn could mean that uh, it could become a good buy if a, if a bank is doing very well on the digital side so i think yeah i mean it could be a trend um you know it's, though it's sort of at this point in time in globally i think it's uh, hard to see uh, you know except couple of examples how big this can become so uh, it could become big uh, and it probably will become big uh, simply because if the more and more merchants essentially move to uh, a sort of system which uh, allows them to take uh, digital payments uh, it's quite likely that wallets will become larger and uh, there i would think that you know private banks will probably have an edge because they are far more advanced in technology compared to uh, psu banks consumption stocks have fallen 
uh, and consumer durables, consumption names, all have seen a fall. Do you think that uh, this fall is a buying opportunity? Because once the currency is back, once people get their income stream back online, uh, it will really not matter much in terms of demand? So there has been a lot of correction. In fact, the thing is that staples, which are the most defensive of all in terms of demand, have corrected a bit more than, for example, autos, which have more discretionary demand. Their demand hits have been higher. And that probably is because of the fact that uh, these stocks in con consumer sector were expensive to begin with. And I think that's the reason why we sort of our report has come out, because we think that the demand normalization in sectors such as FMCG will be the fastest, while we are not getting these stocks at a, at a much more re reasonable valuation. So, so that's why I think we sort of like it, because uh, this will be the first sector which normalizes in terms of demand growth. Just taking an example of an Asian paints, every time that they have seen such problems of low demand or high raw material costs, they have passed on the hype and volumes have not gotten impacted or volumes after a point of time tend to recover. Do you think that can happen again now for very strong brands? So I think one thing you need to differentiate uh, is a margin picture versus actual uh, demand. Because uh, when you say that you, know, you bounce back from a margin hit because you have a strong brand, therefore ability to pass on, is a different thing from saying if your demand itself sort of corrects. So, uh, so you, well, I can't answer you uh, directly in terms of just because it's a very stock specific question, but my point simply is that what you need to figure out is what will happen to demand eventually. It sort of goes back to normal in, in, in two quarters. You know, obviously you should be looking at the stocks. But, uh, you know, when you talk uh, stock correction in context of brands, you probably typically mean that when last time, uh, you know, when the crude prices rose very, very fast and there was an increase in, uh, increase in raw material costs, margins got compressed, and that's why the stock fell. And the, but you're not, you're not saying that sales growth really slowed down. Because at the end of the day, uh, the ability to protect margins is what brands gives you. Uh, but if your growth itself is impacted because of some reason, which is slightly more permanent, then it's a different situation. But as I said, I mean, you know, one has to look at case-to-case -case basis and, and make a judgment on, 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 on this point. How would you look at infra with SME businesses now coming fully into the banking space? Do you think the loan demand from some of these SME sectors would tend to increase quite a bit and that could also lead to a little bit of capex recovery? It's because we'll have to wait and see actually because the capex is uh, a process which is driven, driven by uh, the capacity utilization rather than uh, you know, so it, it's driven by what the uh, entrepreneur sees in terms of his demand. If he expects, if he sees demand sort of increasing for his product and he sees himself running out of capacity or, or corporate for that matter, they go, they go and invest in capacity. The fact of the matter is that demonetization, while it might get people into the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, organized space or, or funding, the first, first impact of demonetization is slowdown. So I think capex pickup just because people come back into the system is something that I would sort of not hang my hat on. What I would like to see essentially is that because of demonetization, the cost of funding falls, therefore demand picks up, and therefore people start to invest. That is probably a more likely sequence of events rather than just uh, access to funding. Were you surprised by what RBI did? And looking at the cost of funding coming down since about 2014, 2015, a lot has been done, but still the 10-year bond reflects as if there could be more cut uh, on the interest rate side? That is what we think. I mean, uh, more than RBI, we think that the fact that the system liquidity goes up a lot uh, will essentially mean that banks will pass on uh, uh, some of these uh, benefits of lower cost of funding onto their consumers. Can you just explain our viewers that how cost of funding would impact and what could be the lag effect before we start to see any impact on earnings? So obviously, uh, every uh, cut in interest rates will generate um, high risk appetite. And, uh, and therefore, with a lag of five, six months, you'll start to see a pickup for demand for funds. Now, it could happen in different fashions. For example, lower rates could uh, you know, tend uh, to people start, start to buy more automobiles. And therefore, automobile companies start investing. Lower cost of debt for infrastructure companies could mean that their break-evens have become lower, uh, break-even returns have become lower, and that starts the process of investment. It could also mean that house uh, buyers, uh, you know, find the cost of housing much lower on an EMI basis and start to invest. 
So it could have multiple impacts, but these impacts only happen with a with with a lag over a period of time. Uh, so so typically lower interest rates do lead to a pickup, but it takes uh, and the context is very important because if lower interest rates are happening because the economy is collapsing around you, and therefore demand for money is falling is a different context. In the context of a pickup picking economy which is picking up, if you get lower rates, then it sort of pushes it upwards further. And that is quite likely, it's possible, but you know, you've got to wait for about five, six months and a year for this impact to be fully sort of come full fully come through in the uh, economy. For metal stocks, what will be your view? Dollar index has gone up, but underlying metal prices have also gone up, which is something which uh, you know we've not seen earlier. Metal stocks have rallied. Do you think there is more steam left and you know this correlation between dollar index and metal prices is telling that this time it's something different? So, uh, you know, uh, that's something that I sort of haven't got right because I sort of, but the fact is why it has happened I think is because the view on China has become slightly more positive and, uh, and that there have been cutbacks. Uh, you know, for example, oil, in, oil is because of cutbacks by OPEC or, or metals are the same thing. There have been cutbacks uh, in capacities. Uh, but this is a trend which happened despite the fact that uh, the growth in China was slow. US doesn't impact metals that much, frankly. It is, it is the, the in engine is entirely uh, on this side of the globe rather than on that side of the globe. So uh, at, at the margin, obviously, you know, more positive signals from US emerging, but the, uh, the metals had started rallying much before the Trump election, for example. So, so um, whether that could continue, I think, I think we've probably seen a lot of that, that rally happen already. And, and, and the prices are such that producers are starting to make decent money. So I personally wouldn't think that there'll be a sort of continued sort of rally from here. Um, but you know, definitely it's been a surprise personally for me. IT and pharma have also seen a little bit of correction after demonetization, but these are businesses that uh, you know, don't have a lot of cash involvement. And that's why probably six months down the line, they would probably trade at similar multiples or what's uh, happening uh, there. Yeah, I would guess so. I mean, this says that obviously, you know, in in short term, markets tend to uh, um, rotation in markets tend to happen because if, for example, you're seeing slow slow down the economy, you'll go and buy defenses. Uh, but um, uh, the the impact on the fundamentals of farm and IT will be very limited, if if any, actually, there probably be no impact. So they will they will not see any loss of earnings or change of earnings. And the change of multiples happens because people are sort of maybe doing sector rotation. Uh, given what is happening in the economy. Uh, but eventually, let's say in three, four months' time, things will revert back to normal in terms of how people look at stocks uh, with the, each other because the fundamentals of other part of the economy will start to stabilize. Thank you, Prabhat, so much for uh, taking out time for us. Always a pleasure talking to you.